King Shamrock fans, my name is Anthony Pasquale here with Nathan Uzena. And we're here to take you to a conference game here at Kerwin Court between our St. Patrick Shamrocks and the Hurricanes from Marion Central Catholic. Now, Nathan, I hear Marion Central Catholic as one of the top scorers. Tell me about it. Yeah, Adam Pischke averages 23.7 points per game. He's a 5'10 guard and he's a blur on the court. We have to shut him down today in order to get the W. I think he'll be one of the main factors in tonight's game. And also, I think uh, one of the big things is going to be staying undefeated in the Obviously, uh, we beat Notre Dame at Notre Dame, and Marist here, and Nazareth at Nazareth. So we have three conference wins under our belt, and they don't have any. Yeah, they're 0-3 in conference, but they're 12-4 and overall. So it'll be interesting to see what team shows up today for them. Mm -hmm, definitely. And uh, one of the things that I find interesting about this game is that we are bringing the class of 2020 here to watch the game, which I think is pretty interesting. Yeah, when I got into the school, going to the game, I saw a bunch of shadows there. I thought it was a subsection first, but there's a lot of shadows here today. Yeah, it'll be very important for them to get a nice introduction to the way we do uh, basketball here at Kerlin Court. Now, one of the main things that I think it's going to come down to in this game is the last couple of games we've struggled to shoot in our own building. And uh, one of the big, big things is going to be guys like Lawrence and Jalen and Keyshawn coming to play. So now you see the Shamrocks are getting uh, in the huddle before the game. If you're Coach Bailey, what are you telling them? I think just come out here cool and collect, calm and collected like it's any other game and just play your best, make shots. I was talking to Jalen earlier today, and he said it wasn't that they didn't execute, it's just that they didn't finish. Mm -hmm. They weren't making their shots. So he knows that sometimes you have those games. It's kind of just a fluke game. They're going to get past it, and they're going to hit their shots tonight. Yeah, some, and it was kind of evident last game that every play that they're running was getting them open shots, the shots that they were looking for. And like Jalen said, they weren't finishing. The shots weren't falling. But it, it all depends on if it's your night. Yeah, and everybody has those games. Mm -hmm. And now we, now we will send you down to the court for the national anthem done by our band.
And their big man will be number 14, Thomas Menard. He's 6'6". Six, six. And now the lineup for your St. Patrick Shamrocks. Their first starter will be Jalen Nelson, number 11. Then Lawrence Merritt. What a handshake that was. We got Sean Eck. John Hamilton, the mop. And to round out the starting five will be the big man, Henry Guchwan. So for a little repeat, it will be Jalen, Lawrence, Sean, John, and Henry to start the game against the Hurricanes. So obviously we said we're going for our uh, fourth conference victory and no conference losses. Why is that so important? I think it's important because if you start off great, that's how you keep the tone. You get, you get hot, you keep going. You start a streak, you want to keep it. So if we can get out here with a W, that means... We're just going to keep the momentum going for the next game and game after that. It'll be very important to keep the undefeated going because that gives us a better and better chance to beat conference when especially who are thought to be the two best teams have a loss, both handed to them by us, being Marist and Notre Dame. I think the only other team really to watch out for is Marion Catholic. But past that, I think we, we've pretty much beaten the best teams in the conference. Yeah, and it'll be Henry who wins the jump. Lawrence gives it to Sean Eck. Sean Eck dribbles to the wing, takes it, almost steps out of bounds, gives it to Lawrence. Lawrence will dribble it over to Jalen Nelson. It looks like Marion Central Catholic is in man-to-man uh, -man defense. Lawrence takes a deep three. Lights out Lawrence, ladies and gentlemen, starting off early. That's a big shot. It's not the tone of the game. That was a deep three. And ladies and gentlemen, it's evident why we call them lights out. Looks like the Shamrocks are in a 2-3 zone. I like it here. John almost comes away with a steal, finds himself on the ground. As the ball's given back top in the corner. And a charge is taken by John with a little fist bump. The mop doing it again. Look at that. St. Pat's come out with great energy so far. That's big. If you're a coach, there's nothing better than you want to see as an, um, a field goal made on the opening drive, opening possession, and then a charge taken on the first defensive possession. What a way to start the game. Sean in a little bit of trouble gives it to John. Right back to Sean. He'll take it in, give it to Jalen. Wide open for three. No good. But it will stay Shamrock ball. Open shot for Jalen, just didn't fall. He'll get it going, though. And Sean will inbound this one. The classic box play. Isolating Jalen. Jalen to Lawrence. Lawrence over to Sean. Sean to Henry. Henry, no good with the floater. John can't get the rebound. Marion Central Catholic will take it back. I think I'm just going to call him Marion, because Marion Central Catholic is... Way too much. Probably easier. Lawrence to Jalen. 
And no good on the little floater. It'll be a three on one with Lawrence being the only one there. Did not foul, so it'll be three to two Shamrocks here. We're heading towards six minutes to play here in the first quarter. The one thing we haven't really talked about is that Marion doesn't have that much size, and neither do we, so they're kind of playing to our strengths, or our weaknesses, actually. The SS Jalen can't get the boat out of the dock so far. How did he stay in bounds? Marion will take it. Given a wide open lane, they'll take the lead. Four to three, Hurricanes. Coach Bailey looked pretty upset on that. No one came over to help. Jalen, over to Lawrence. A Little bit too deep for him now. And that gets stolen. Lawrence again on a two and one. And another basket for the Hurricanes, six to three now. It looks like Keyshawn, Xavier Pinson, Dewey, and Io will be checking in. I don't think Coach Bailey likes the way the starters are playing right now. Getting kind of sloppy with the ball early on. Lawrence takes another three. Lights out Lawrence again. He makes every shot, ladies and gentlemen, I tell you. He came to play tonight. I think it was my interview with him. <laughs> Got him pumped up for today's game. And a step back, no foul called. Coach Bailey does not look ha happy with that call as Xavier, Dewey, Iro, and Keyshawn will come in. Looks like Sean Eck will stay in the game. So it'll be Xavier, Sean, Dewey, Keyshawn, and Io. I was reading an article in the Sun Times about Io that was published a little bit earlier in the season. And they said about him that he's very promising, but at the same time very raw, which is two good adjectives to uh, describe him, wouldn't you say? Yeah, that's one of the things when you see with a player now with a lot of experience. And the Hurricanes go on the break. And the three-point attempt, it's good. 9-6 Hurricanes. Going back to Iowa, though, the one thing that he does have, though, is size, and that's one of the things we're lacking, so. And it looks like Marion Central Catholic is now in a 2-3 zone. So they changed it up as soon as Xavier Pinson and the rest of them came in into the game. No look pass to Iowa gets deflected, but still got to him. Over to Sean. Sean gets it blocked, and the Hurricanes will come back. And Xavier comes away with the steal. Pass to Keyshawn, back to Xavier, and the left-handed layup is good. Nine to eight Hurricanes as the Shamrocks get back in it. It's exactly how you run the transition. Passes back and forth, just get the open man. Xavier is one of the best at those. I've, watched, I've got the pleasure to watch him in some of the sophomore games. He does that almost every possession. What a fun guy to watch as Marion Central Catholic makes another one. Talk about locked in. Yeah, I don't think they missed only like one shot so far. Io in the corner. Full court pass to Xavier over his head. Not a good choice there by Io. Yeah, not a very good decision. He got stuck in the corner and threw it cross court way over his head. I wonder why he was out there. And that also didn't, I think this is what you were saying, Io's not accustomed to being behind the three-point line or even close to it. Yeah, I think he's probably accustomed to being able to bully anyone in the post because he's so big. But he has he probably has to learn how to play to his athleticism and not only to his size. And there will be a foul called on number 14. That's Menner. His first, the team's second. St. Pat's has to get a good shot right here. Kind of been sloppy on the last few possessions, actually. Good thing Lawrence hit those two threes early on or else we could be in some trouble. Definitely. Because the last game, remember our first quarter was 11-1, to we were losing. And I was able to snag that like Odell Beckham there, but can't get it to go. And on the wing, Marion Central driving in. And 
and it'll be Shamrock Ball as Lawrence, Max, Trophy, Jalen, and John Hamilton come into the game. Coach Bailey's switching up the lineups a lot so far. Yeah, I wonder if it's stemming from the game versus Loyola, if, they, if they're changing some of the rotations to see how everyone playing plays with each other. The only problem with that is that if you get new players to play with, with each other, sometimes the chemistry isn't always there. What a spin move by Jalen, pass to John, and they get the layup to go. That was such a smooth play. The SS Jalen gives a sweet pass there to the mop. I like this lineup. Lawrence and Xavier in the same time. Along with Jalen, Max, and John, there's not one guy who can't shoot on the court right now. One of the things that when you look at a player like Max Trophy, you wouldn't guess that he's as lights out as he is. No, I think when he goes out there, he kind of surprises the players who are guarding him. Because mm -hmm. he just pulls up and hits the three, and it's kind of out of nowhere almost. Because if you look at the lineup, definitely Xavier Lawrence and Jalen, you want to cover them as a threat to score a three-pointer. And John, who's inside, is always a threat because anybody in the paint is. But the thing about Max is he could go everywhere and make a shot from that exact spot. He's kind of like the X factor almost. I agree. Is there now in a 2-3 zone? And stolen by Lawrence, but a little miscommunication there as Lawrence and Jalen both thought the other would take it. Lawrence is not like happy with himself. Yeah, that's rough. You get this get the steal and then just turn it right back over. But Lawrence, that, yeah, Lawrence is angry. If any of you caught that, he went right to Jalen, kind of to say, my bad. And that's the thing you want from a leader. And the floater, no good. Xavier with the rebound. For a small kid, he can jump. He'll give it to Lawrence. He'll back out. Give it to Max, who's wide open for three. The chauffeur, no good. John Hamilton up with the floater, no good. Good hustle for that rebound, though. Second chance points could be really big in this game. We're under a minute to go here in the first quarter as Marion Central Catholic gets the rebound again. And a foul is called there on John Hamilton. Ooh, that looks like all ball. That'll be the Shamrock's second foul, John Hamilton's first. Oh, they mistakenly called it on Lawrence Merritt, I believe. That'll be his second. And Keyshawn will have to come in for him. I didn't think Lawrence was even by the play. I didn't, uh, I didn't either. But Keyshawn will come in for Lawrence, so now the lineup will be Xavier, Keyshawn, Jalen, Max, and John. The one thing that surprised me, we haven't really seen much from Adam Pischke, who's supposed to be their best player. I haven't really seen mm -hmm. him. For a guy who's averaging 23 points a game, not much from him. As the Hurricanes lead by 14, excuse me, lead 14 to 10, they lead by four, as Sean Eck will come in for Captain Smooth, Xavier Pinson. And Max will inbound it to Sean. We'll take it over the half court line, give it to John who gives it to Max, over to Jalen. Jalen on top to Keyshawn. Keyshawn to John. John to Sean. I think they're going to hold for the last shot. What kind of defense is Marion Central in right now? I think they're in man. But they're no one. a generous man. I guess they, they don't respect John Hamilton from the three. Yeah, that's what I was, was getting to. And Sean now with 10 seconds remaining in the first. Gives it to Keyshawn. Over to Jalen. He'll dribble it. Oh and get it stolen from him. And a desperation prayer for Marion Central Catholic, no good. As that'll be the end of the first quarter as the Shamrocks trail by four and the Hurricanes lead it 14 to 10. I'd like to take uh, the time right now to congratulate my Uncle Billy who is watching this game with his new fiance, Laura. Thank you guys for tuning in and congratulations. So far, I think we're kind of lucky to be down by four. Been really sloppy. Haven't seen many very good possessions. Yeah, we really haven't uh, come out with the energy that we thought we would. And uh, today, Coach Bailey told me to come up with the three keys. And my three keys was the first one, they need to isolate Pitchkey. 
who's coming in here scoring 24 points a game. You got to stop that. So far, it looks like they have. The second one is they need to knock down some shots in our home building. And Lawrence has done that a little bit. We just need Jalen's and Xavier's to start falling. And the last one is rebound. We've been uh, horribly out-rebounded. Yeah, out-rebounded in the games that we've lost. And in the games that we've won, we've out-rebounded the other teams. So I think rebounding will be key in this one. Yeah, a lot, a lot of rebounding isn't just talent or being tall. It's about hustle and being able to get to the ball and wanting the ball. And if they come out with the intensity, like so far, I think at the beginning of the game we had it. I mean, hopefully they recapture it in the beginning of the second quarter. If we can do that, I mean, we can out-rebound this team. And plus, they're not that tall. Yeah. And one of the things that you said, it doesn't come down to talent with rebounding. It comes down to, like, the grit factor. And that's not something that a coach can coach. No, it's got to come in from inside of you. you got to want it. And it looks like some of our players definitely do. Sean will be guarding the ball. Keyshawn with some good defense. Gives it to Sean. Sean to Keyshawn in the corner. The bullet for three. No good. See those shots that we need to start having them fall for us to be able to pull away with a W. Definitely. I think that's Pischke with the ball. He's going to pull up. a shot and it's good. There's the 24 points a game. That's rough. That wasn't an easy shot. Just pulled up and drained it right in his face. Looks like me and intramurals. <laughs> and Pitchkey again with a layup. Here comes a little burst of scoring from the Hurricanes as they now lead by eight, and Coach Bailey will be forced to call a timeout. Yeah, he's upset with that possession. I think he told them in the, in the huddle they need to stop turning over the ball, and they need to be make more crisp passes and not be sloppy, and that was exactly what he didn't want. It. He tried doing a nice dribble move. It was nice, but then he turned it over. I mean, they run this motion offense. It's not what you're supposed to do. It's supposed to be nice passing, quick passing. Isolate an open shooter. Mm -hmm. Move the ball around. But, I mean, as you notice, like, throughout the games, we... Same pass, you don't see that much dribbling with them. Really. Yeah, you really don't. It's a little bit just to find an open man. That's the only dribbling you see. And one of the things I like to ask you is during a timeout like that, if you're the coach, what are you telling them? I think you're telling them not to. Got to be careful with the ball. I mean, we're getting killed right now because they're getting points in transition. I mean, we, they've had, I think right now, five or six steals already. And it's only the second quarter. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a lot of turnovers. And I just want to point out, our last conference win was against Nazareth, and we put up 72 points in that game. Whoa. And uh, tonight we have 10 through the first quarter, so... Looks like John almost tried to dunk that one, got right up there and got fouled, so he'll be going to the line for two. Yeah, he got up. <laughs> Here's a quote from Coach Bailey after that game. He said, I'm really proud of our effort. A lot of teams would have just cashed in. Our kids made a tremendous comeback. This could be the turning point of our season. I think the big thing about that game was that we were coming off the loss to Loyola, mm -hmm. and they needed a bounce back. That's a big way, 72 points. You could tell they responded. Yeah, they surely did need a bounce back because that Loyola game was atrocious. Now they just need to get that inner energy from that game and put it into this game. Certainly. And Marion will get the rebound. John did not make either of those free throws. And double dribble. Shamrash will retain possession down by eight here. I think the one thing that has kind of confused St. Pat's on, on offense, though, is that we've seen Marion Catholic switch from man to zone a few times here already. Mm -hmm and that kind of disrupts your offensive flow. Yep, and the bullet takes a shot, no good. Unable to get a rebound either. Jalen with good defense. And that backhanded pass, unable to be gotten, and that'll go out of bounds. St. Pat's needs to cash in off 
these back-to-back -back turnovers. We just need some points right here. A three would be beautiful at this time. I wonder why Lawrence isn't out there right now. Jalen for three, no good. I believe between the, the two of them, Jalen and Keyshawn, they're 0 for 4 from behind the line. And Marion Central knocks another one down. Coach Bailey forced to call another timeout as the Shamrocks now go down by 11. And Central, Marion Central has come out hitting everything, it seems. Yeah. Not many miss, not many miss shots so far. Mm -hmm. Wonder what Coach Bailey's saying right now. Yeah, I, don't, I think it might just be a get your head in the game type of thing. Because yeah. anything that he wanted to say strategic wise, he would have said the last time out. Yeah, you could tell his emotions on the sideline. He doesn't look happy. Even from the start of the game, early on they let an open basket, no one helped on defense. He has hands flailing. Mm -hmm. One of the things I find interesting about the way Coach Bailey coaches is you hardly ever see the man sit down. That's just not the way he coaches. And when I interviewed him, I asked him about it, and he said, it's just my style. He, he said, I can't sit down. I'm too, too into the game. I like to move around. And he said, but that's, that's not the only way coaches are. You can have a good coach who likes to sit down and handle things more calmly. And he said, that's the type of coach Coach Kerland was. And obviously, Coach Kerland did something right because the court is named after him. <laughs> Yeah, kind of see like kind of different personalities. You also see Fred mm -hmm. always on the sitting on the bench. You don't see him talking a lot, but I kind of like when the coaches are up and talking and yelling out things. I think it kind of shows that they're into the game yeah. and they're fighting. He's fighting with the team, and that's also the way uh, Thibodeau was. Yeah, I so think it's kind of like a switch in the Bulls organization too. Sean takes it over. He'll give it to Keyshawn, who gets the ball taken from him. No oh. turnover. Over to Pischke. Pischke with the pass. And Bucket is good. Now head to the line, trying to make this a three-point play. I think right now we're just getting outplayed. Down line. Mm -hmm. Down line outplay right now. Here comes Lawrence. He's in for Keyshawn. Lawrence needs a spark now. He'll yeah. be a little bit of a firebolt to get this team going because they need it desperately. They can't afford to go down and wait till the fourth quarter like they did against Loyola. I mean, he was the spark at the beginning of the game. If he can get that energy to everyone, mm -hmm. we have a chance to come back. I mean, it's only early seconds, so I mean, a lot of time left. And it's 24-10 to 10 now, the Shamrocks trail, as there are five and a half left here in the second. Quarter. It seems like it almost got out of hand really quickly, though. Yeah. I mean, what was it, 14 to 10 at end of first? It's only been two minutes. A couple of big three pointers, and they've knocked down, I think, three or four free throws. Can do that. They add up quickly, the points do. And we haven't scored in the whole second mm -hmm. quarter. Sean, dribbling around, looking for something. He'll find Lawrence. Bounce pass to Keyshawn. Right to Jalen, no good. Great pass for Henry. He saw Keyshawn cut to the basket. He was open, got fouled. I think after that second time out, it seems like St. Pat's has switched their offense. Yeah. Doing a lot of dribble handoffs and cutting it through the paint. Mm hmm. And that's something we haven't seen um, pretty much at all this year. Yeah, usually we see a lot of passing the ball, set a screen, mm -hmm. run around it, and see if you're open. And the SS Jalen gets one to go. And Dewey will check in now for John and Xavier in for um, Sean and Io in there for John Ableton. So John, Henry, and Sean come out and Io, Xavier, and Dewey come in. This is an interesting lineup too. Yeah, I think Coach Bailey's starting to switch the rotations. And that free throw did not go in. I'm not sure how. Jalen playing defense now. And the Shamrocks are back in a man-to-man. -man. The one thing I'm kind of surprised for many Central is I haven't, we haven't really seen a lot of isolation for Pischke. Mm -hmm. 
usually when you have a star player like that, oh, here it is. There's a little pick trying to get him open. He'll drive right in, and they'll call a foul. Yeah, you can tell Central Catholic wants to go to him. That, that was a design play for him to get a shot. Yeah, he's certainly one of the guys that they, uh, they're trying to get the points because usually when you have a guy like that, you want him with the ball the entire game or as much as the game as he can. He knocks that one down. The one thing I've noticed with these rotation changes, Xavier's getting a lot more playing time than he did at the beginning of the season. I don't remember him coming in at all during the ND game. Yeah. Oh, he came in very a little amount of time, if that. He's uh, he's definitely increasing his role on varsity, but in doing that, he's uh, decreasing his role on sophomores. So on the sophomore team, a lot of their games are becoming closer. What a move! He'll take that right to the basket. Won't get the rebound, but do will. And they'll call a foul there. Marion Central will get the ball. That foul is the fifth Shamrocks foul. They'll call that on Dewey. I mean, this is starting to look almost like an old game. I mean, we got a couple open threes, missed them. We had four free throws. We've missed three. I mean, there's points that we should have more than 11 points right now. It's just For sure. our shots aren't falling. I mean, that layup, I mean, it looked like he got a good look, look at the basket. He got there, just he, doesn't, he didn't finish it. And... It's not like Marion Central Catholic is doing anything special. They've turned it over like four or five out of their last probably ten possessions. I mean, right there, we're doing the definition. Sloppy. Looks like pass is going to a full press. Trying to get some turnovers and some easy baskets. I mean, so far I haven't really seen anything special for the dribbling and passing. I mean, just been transition points a lot mm -hmm. for a lot Marion of, Catholic. A lot of those on the tra fast break. <clears throat> and that's because of the turnovers. I mean, you always say good defense turns to good offense. It's been true here for S Central Catholic. There'll be a travel called there. Dewey will inbound it to Xavier, the sophomore taking it up. And you see John Hamilton there at the scores table. Xavier to Lawrence. Lawrence wearing some new kicks. I like them. Yeah, the en entire rest of the team is wearing the black. His shoes really stand out. And there's Pitchkey, unable to get it to go. The tip in, no good either. But the third chance goes in. Wait, look at that. That's that's got to be a hustle right there. There's mm -hmm. three Saint, there's three Pats players right there, and one Central Catholic, and he gets the rebound. Gets his two two offensive rebounds. He gets second chance points. That can't happen. And there's Xavier on the wing. Little stutter stop over to Dewey. Dewey to Jalen. Jalen drives right in. No good on the layup. Another one. It seemed like we got to the basket, just didn't finish. And Pitschke with a crazy layup. Coach Bailey calls yet another timeout. Is the Shamrocks trail by 17, 28 to 11, with three to go here in the second. Yeah, we need to cut down this lead before this halftime, or else this could be starting to get out of hand. Definitely. I wonder if later on we're going to start seeing some new players that usually are off the bench. I mean, when you start getting killed like this and your starters and your main reserves aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing, it's when you usually see the bench players come in. Yeah, and we haven't seen much of guys like uh, Chofi or uh, or even a guy like Dewey that much. Yeah, and even them, I mean, if they're not playing either, we've also seen, we don't see McLaughlin or, or Killian or Kramer on a lot, but, I mean, and if we, no one's doing it, I mean, why can't they? Yeah, and we've seen a couple of games where guys like Kramer came in and performed. Yeah, I mean, we've seen Kramer come in and get quick points, like, yeah. easily. I mean, I always wonder why he's not part of the rotation almost. And they're also dressing, I think, four to five players that play on the sophomores team. Those being uh, Christopher Lara, Eric Liss, Xavier, obviously, and then freshman Marcus Wright. And they could all come in and uh, perform. I know they can perform on uh, sophomores, so why not give them a shot if they have to? I mean, if the main players aren't, aren't showing up for these big games, why not give the reserves 
or the bench warmers a chance. And if I'm going to be honest, I think one of the reasons why they're not doing that good is there's no stud section. We, we should not have a Friday night home game without much of a stud section. Yeah, I, this game didn't really get hyped up as much as I thought it would be. I, I didn't even know we had a game till like, Wednesday. And there's Trophy in there. Here's Lawrence with the ball. Spin move in the corner to Jalen. Jalen dribbles it over to Shawnak. Shawnak steps back, gives it to Jalen. Jalen will drive right in with a layup. The SS Jalen is good. And one. It's a big shot. Stop the bleeding. Maybe start to turn it around right here. If any of you have seen the uh, Paint Manning nationwide commercial, I'd like to say epic comeback starts right here. <laughs> Jalen at the line. And the shot is good. Nothing but net for Jalen. The Shamrocks trail now by 16 with about two left in the first half. Lawrence with some nice defense as Marion Central Catholic gives a backdoor pass. No good with the layup. And John Hamilton will fight for the rebound and get it. He'll give the ball to Sean, who threads the needle all the way there. Gives it to Jalen in the corner. Fakes a shot, gives it to Lawrence. Lawrence to Sean Eck. Sean Eck to Jalen. Jalen to Sean. Sean over in the corner to John Hamilton. To Jalen. Nice little stutter step, even got me. Lawrence in the corner now to Sean. Sean takes it, gives it to John, who will shoot a shot from the elbow, no good. And it'll be saved by John, over on top to Jalen. Trophy for three, the show four is good. The Shamrocks cut a 17 point deficit to 13 in a matter of seconds. Max Trophy is just like a current day, like stretch four. Mm -hmm. Able to guard inside and be able to shoot the three. And that's, Stripped by Lawrence, and he doesn't like it, and neither does Coach Bailey. It was a controversial call. I thought it was our ball. Yeah, I'm in agreement with Lawrence and Coach Bailey. No bias there, just saying he got all ball. And he's definitely not happy about it because that's his third foul. I think he's also upset. That was a great, that was a great steal almost. Yeah, if that, if that was a steal and we'd be heading on a break, a potential three, we could cut this deficit to... Not too many points. I mean, we're already on a 5-0 run. Push it to 7-0. We got a real run then. And Keyshawn comes in for Lawrence. And even though they missed the free throw, we are still technically on that run. The second free throw is made. 31-17. And Marion Central Catholic will have a couple of substitutions. Sean with the ball. Dribbles it to Keyshawn on the wing. Keyshawn has nowhere to give it to. Gives it to John on the wing. Who takes a three-pointer. No good. Shofi fights for the rebound and gets it. He'll take a three. No good. Sean will fight for that rebound and he'll get it. He'll take it right in, shoots a crazy layup, no good. At least there you saw the hustle that we've, we've been wanting and needing throughout the game. Right there. Guys got like two rebounds. John Hamilton, uh, Max Trophy, and Sean all came away with hustle points there. As Marion Central Catholic is, looks like they're going to hold for the last shot of the half. Probably going to set up some isolation for Pischke. I believe it's... Is it Pischke with the ball right now? Yeah. Number five, yeah. Great help by Max Schofi. Ooh. Step back. That was a move an NBA player makes. He'll be going to the line for three shots. Yeah, Max Schofi got caught in the air. He saw it. We saw him do that earlier in the game. Sean Eck was in there. He just didn't get the call. He got no call. 
and the shot is up, and it's good. I don't think that guy misses a free throw. No, I'm pretty sure. I think he's D1 bound. Mm -hmm. Let's just say that. I think he's four for four now from behind the line, or three for three. I think he's made all of his free throws. Yeah, hasn't missed. And until now, we'll keep talking. <laughs> we jinxed him. That's the one thing I was kind of surprised. They're 0-3 in conference, but when you have, like, a big-time player who's a senior, like him, you think they would kind of be better than yeah. that. He would be a guy that, like Nick Coleman, like last year. I was looking at some of his game stats. He put up 32 in one game, 37. Mm -hmm. I mean, those are big numbers, especially and in high school. He'll make that with two seconds. Sean puts up a three. No good off the buzzer. And the Shamrocks will head to the locker room trying to fix things up for the second half as the Shamrocks lead it trail by 16, 33 to 17. During halftime, we will be airing a pre-recorded interview that I had the pleasure to shoot with Lawrence Merritt. So we'll leave you guys with that. of technical difficulties were we weren't able to uh, air the Lawrence Merritt video but luckily for us Dr. Schmidt's best friend is here so I'm here with the director of basketball operations for Marion Central Catholic Mr. Rachula thank you for joining us thank you Anthony so uh, the first question I have to ask you is uh, is there a particular thing that you like about this rivalry since you know Dr. Schmidt um, yes it is because I think it's the best rivalry in the ESCC both schools get along very well. Mm -hmm. They're both run by very good people. 
and uh, I, it just it's always a class situation when we're dealing with St. Pat's. So uh, Dr. Schmidt was telling me earlier today that you uh, golf with him sometimes, but against him, and he said that uh, your team that you are is named the Dream Team. Why is that? Uh, that's uh, a, a, a moniker given to us by uh, Mr. Kunkel from Sunset Ridge and other people like Dr. Schmidt who don't like cat bowling, <laughs> so they uh, constantly are on us. I don't know why. We're very lovable people. That's why we're the Dream Team. So uh, obviously Marion Central Catholic is up somewhat big now is they're up 16 at the halftime. Why do you think that is? Um, to tell you the truth, I'm shocked. We're playing very well. It's a good St. Pat's team that just hasn't hit shots. This game is definitely going to tighten up St. Pat's. is too well coached and too good of a team not to put up a good play in the second half. Um, we're actually playing with our, our big guy, Sam Ulrich, who's a very good player. Mm. And everybody seems to have a little more spark tonight without him knowing that we had to play such a good St. Pat's team that's uh, 3-0 in the conference, and we mm -hmm. haven't won a conference game yet. This, is, this conference is as tough as it gets. Definitely. We're very lucky that we got in this conference. I think the SEC. So a little bit of a friendship question. Who's the better golfer? Oh, Dr. Schmidt every day of the week. <laughs> He's 70, but he doesn't act like him. There you go. And Mr. Waitula is our best player at the club, but we have a great time competing. It's a lot of fun. And the next question is, uh, who could drive it farther? That one I would usually win. He drives it straighter, <laughs> but I can drive it further, further yeah. offline. Yeah, Mr. Waitula, he's a long drive champ uh, in his day, so he, he bombs That's, the ball. That day's a long time ago. <laughs> Has Joe Schmidt been here since the school opened? I'm not sure about that. <laughs> it's 154 years, I think. I didn't know how old he was. <laughs> so, uh, obviously, you guys are great friends. What is it about... Uh, your friendship that you've been able to build such a great one. I've known him basically my whole life. Our families were friends, and uh, we've been friends, and my kids are friends with him, and mm -hmm. we just have a good time together. Yeah, I'm a generation older, but uh, was great friends with his father when he was here, and his, his boys, he's got four great boys that all went to Marion, and he's also a big Notre Dame guy in South Bend, and as you know, I love the Boilermakers, so mm -hmm. we're always doing battle on the collegiate end also. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all the time we have here with uh, two friends who are right now foes as the Shamrocks trail by 16. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you, man. Anthony, pleasure. You go. Pleasure. You got a big Good future. Job. Rock on. Rock on. This is the guy that has the
Ladies and gentlemen, we are back for the second half of action between the Shamrocks and the Hurricanes. I'd like to say a thank you to Dr. Schmidt and Mr. Machula for their uh, halftime interview. That was a pretty fun interview. I didn't know that those two guys from different schools were best friends. Here we see Lawrence with the ball, giving it to Keyshawn, who dribbles right in. The bullet gets two. Great start of the half. As the Shamrocks look like they're in a full court press, it is broken right by Pitchkey. who will get a layup to go. Washes away our uh, great start for the quarter. John Hamilton on the wing. Gives to Keyshawn. Deshaun Eck. I think the main thing we need to know right now is that we're not going to cut down the sleeve one shot. Yeah. We shouldn't panic yet. Mm -hmm. you, need, you need to get good shots. It doesn't have to be threes. I mean, it can be, obviously, but just good shots is what's important right now. One of the things that I always used to say when I played is when as Keyshawn takes a shot, he swishes it. The bullet is good for three. One of the things that I used to say is that was their half. This one's ours. So if they can get ahead by that much, we can too. As the deficit is now 13. One there almost. Yeah. Whoever said that screen fell over. Mm -hmm. And a foul called, I believe, on John Hamilton. They're lucky they double teamed that one guy in the post, but they didn't see number 14 was wide open mm -hmm. behind him. They called that foul there on Jalen, his first, the team's first. That's really important throughout the game for Lawrence not to be in foul trouble. Yeah, because he's at three, I think, right now. How many in this do you t t have to take to foul out? Is it five? Or five, I'm pretty sure. Five? I don't think he gets to six until uh, college. As the first free throw was... And the second free throw was good. Lawrence takes it up. Gives it to Keyshawn. Keyshawn to John Hamilton. To Lawrence. Lawrence with the dribble move kind of out of control gets it taken from him. And that should be a carry or a double dribble. And it will be as the Shamrocks will get the ball back. Down by 15. That's one of the things we saw in the first half. We do these dribble moves, turn it over, and they get transition. Good thing we see. We stopped, they, got, they stopped themselves there, but we got the ball back without any damage. So. And we have some words of wisdom from Mr. Presslack. He says they need to work on their turnover percentage at halftime. We need to pull them out of the doldrums. Go broadcast team and go Shamrocks. We'll try to do just that. As the Shamrocks now trail by 18. There will be a foul called there on Pitschke. Keyshawn made the shot, but it won't matter. One thing I've really noticed is that we've kind of been struggling with this man-to-man -man defense. Mm -hmm. They started out with that zone, and I thought we hit the two threes of Lawrence, and then I think they switched. And we haven't really been scoring since then. And there's Lawrence. Guarded by Pitchkey. Jalen takes a jumper. It's good. The SS Jalen. And the SS Jalen stands for sharpshooter. And the shot is up, no good. Rebound, Sean Eck. 
so he'll take it right through. Left-handed layup, no good, but John will fight for the rebound, get it, and miss the layup. Big hustle points for him, though. Great offensive board. And Marion Central takes a three. No good, they get the rebound. Put that back up, no good, but there was a foul called. And then back from the other end, we let up a defensive rebound. Yeah. I mean, just because you do one good thing doesn't mean you can slack off for a play. That'll be Jalen's second. Two fouls for him to start the second half. The first free throw is up and good. You can tell this team really does play at the line. I think we've only seen them miss one free throw. Mm -hmm. And they lead it now by 17. Building towards their biggest lead of the day. Yeah, we, we need to really start cutting this lead down to be able to have a chance, a realistic chance in the fourth quarter. And our deficit is now 18. What we need is one of those 10 nothing runs to put us right back in it. And you always say basketball is a game of runs. It definitely is. Keyshawn, see if he can stay hot. No. Lawrence can't get the rebound, and Pitchkey will take it. Look at the hustle by Sean Eck. Crazy layup attempt, no good, but the putback is. They lead by 20 now. Lawrence inside to Henry. I think also, like we said earlier, you can't press and want to go quick and start shooting up threes just willy-nilly. And I thought that's kind of what we already just started. I mean, we saw John Hamilton take a quick three earlier. Mm -hmm. Not that he can't make it, just I thought it was really quick. Lawrence with a deep three, no good. See, that's a shot that I don't think is necessary. Yeah, like Keyshawn just did a step back three early in the play. I mean, at least let the play develop and see what's going on. The key to the comebacks is doing, sticking to your game plan, just doing it, doing it with a little bit more urgency as the Shamrocks turn it over. They don't show any urgency right now. It just looks like the way that they're playing offensively is wild and sloppy. They don't really look like they're playing together almost. Mm -hmm. It looks like, it seems like one guy's trying to do too much for them right now, and that's not how Coach Bailey wants them to play. And with, Their offense isn't geared for one guy to score a lot. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt, this is something that we haven't seen from them. Pitchkey takes a three, no good. Xavier almost comes away with the rebound, can't get it. Pitchkey on top. Passes it out. The three-pointer is good. The, the lead is now 23 for the Hurricanes. I mean, they're supposed to be in a man-to-man, -man and they let a wide-open three happen. It just can't happen. It looks like Dewey is at the scores table. Yes. And he'll come in for Henry. And the inbounds pass over to Lawrence. Dribbles right in. Nice move by right side Lawrence. He'll get a layup to go. Cuts the lead to 21. The one thing is they need to start cutting this lead even more so that they have a realistic chance in the fourth quarter. Yeah, come back. you need a fighting chance. Xavier, spin move, gives it to Dewey. Dewey no good on the layup and no foul called. And now a foul will be called probably on Dewey. It was, I thought there was a foul on Dewey. He got hacked, I thought. I thought so too. Good shot though. Yeah. Oh. And Marion sent, I thought for a second the Shamrocks had it. They're just in a full court press. Yeah. I think also they're breaking this full court press fairly easily and I thought it led to two easy baskets for them. Mm -hmm. Can't let that happen. And Pitschke will take it. And that shot is up. No good. That was a great box shot by Sean. I mean, he doesn't have the size on number, I think that's three down in the post, but yeah. he was able to able to box him out and got a, got a foul drawn on him. As the Shamrocks will, in, will inbound the ball, we'd like to give a shout out to Mr. Schneider, the science teacher, who's on the road but following our Twitter updates. Thank you for following and tuning in. 
Xavier tries to put a move, but it worked. Got the ball to Sean. Dewey with a head fake. Gets himself right towards the basket. No good on the layup, but he'll be heading to the line for two. And we've seen it again. We're getting these open shots. I mean, he got fouled there, obviously, but even the other shots, it seems like we're getting to the rim sometimes, but we're not finishing. Also, we're getting open threes, but we're not hitting them. I mean, it happens, but at some point, you got to start making the shots fall. And Dewey sinks that one. As the Shamrocks trail by 20 with three minutes to go here in the third quarter. And the lineup is now Xavier, Jalen, Dewey, Lawrence, and Sean Eck. Dewey is good on the second. He's got a smooth little shot. Sean Eck is one of our best defenders. No question you put him on Pitchkey in this situation. Definitely. You always have the best defender on the best offensive player. And Sean Eck is without a doubt our best defender. And they'll do a switch there. I think they'll call Sean for a foul. I didn't see one, though. Yeah, he's kind of staring in disbelief. He's asking fouls on me? Yeah. You sure I did it? Well, either way, they called it. And that'll be his second. The team's fourth. It's Dewey slaps it away, but Pitchkey will get it back. And Marion Central Catholic will be forced to call a timeout as Pitchkey was in the <laughs> middle of a shamrock sandwich. Yeah, lucky they didn't end up with a turnover there. Dewey almost got that steal, poked it away. I think he's almost kind of one of our underrated I defenders. Was, I was just about to say Dewey's one of those players that definitely performs for us but goes, uh, goes kind of quietly. Yeah. He's also one of those guys who can play shutdown defense, it seems. And I think all three seniors have that in common, that they're not guys that you notice as being great players. And I honestly think it's because they've been in the shadows of guys like Nick Coleman and Adrian Perchinowski, Duncan White last year and the year before. So they kind of kept the same role as they had last year, just with more playing time. And their role is great passing and great defense, and boy, are they good at it. Definitely. And Jalen playing defense now. And Dewey slaps that one out of bounds. Nice play there by Dewey. The one big thing is that even though you're down 19 and you're frustrated for St. Pat's, you still have to have, especially when you're playing man, you have to have a lot of communication. Make sure you don't lose your man or calling out switches. And the shot is up. No good. Air ball. Pitchkey gets it and gets it slapped out of his hands, but I believe another foul will be called. Thought he was going to get away with one on a late whistle. I did too. And that'll be on Xavier Pinson, his second, the team's fifth already. Is it six for bonus? I believe it's uh, seven fouls that'll put you in the bonus. St. Patrick playing really good defense right now. That's exactly what you need. You need to force turnovers and get points in transition to be able to come back. Down 19, two minutes to go in the third quarter. See right there, that was great, great defense calling out the switch, but no one followed the, the man off the screen. Fortunately for us, he missed the layup. Xavier almost got it taken from him, but of course he was hacked. So far, I think we've actually done a pretty good job shutting down Pischke, but I think we might have been focusing on that too much, mm -hmm. and it's kind of let these other guys get other big points, kind of wide open threes we've seen. Also, a lot of, they have a lot of second chance points, a lot of hustle yeah. points. And uh, Pischke may be in double digits now, maybe 10 or 12 points, but the thing about him that has killed us is he'll drive right in there and draw three or four guys attending him, and he'll dish it out to one of their shooters, and they've buried him tonight. Yeah, Central Cavs is doing exactly what I think their game plan is. Mm -hmm. And I, talking to Mr. Wachula, he said he was shocked that they were up by as much as they were, and he predicted the game tightening up. So let's see if that'll happen here in the closing seconds of the third quarter and the fourth. Pitchkey with a tip in. Man, one word to describe him is uh, developed. He looks like he's college bound. Definitely. 
I mean, when you average 23 points. Mm -hmm. In the toughest conference. Yeah, definitely. Sean with a really quick basket. That's one of the things about him that goes uh, also unspoken. He can drive. Yeah, he has that ability. He doesn't really have an outside shot very much. You don't see him shooting, but he definitely has that driving ability. I think we've, we've seen him honestly shoot about 10 times, maybe less. Out on Xavier Pinsent, it'll be Hurricane Ball. I wish we had the stats on how many second chance points Central Catholic's gotten. I mean, we saw the possession before this. Mm -hmm. They had two guys right under the rim. They missed a shot and got it right back. It's like, I don't know if it's energy at this point. It's just hustle and knowing where to pick up your man. Yeah, and they're almost at 50 points, I would guess. 10 to 20 of them are second chance points. I mean, 50 points for is kind of uncharacteristic for a St. Patrick's team that's usually pretty good on defense. Mm -hmm. I would it's, almost say it's kind of like their staple. Yeah. They don't give up a lot of points. They're a very sound defensive team. And there it goes to Xavier with nine seconds, eight, five remaining. He'll give it to Keyshawn who will take a deep shot the bullet's no good and no chance for a putback attempt as Marion Central Catholic launches one, but that did not come close to the basket. As the Shamrocks trail by 21 heading into the fourth quarter, what are the keys to fueling a comeback here? You have to hit your shots. That's plain and simple. I mean, so far we haven't done a great job of hitting our shots. I think we've gotten some pretty good looks, mm -hmm. and just they're not falling. But now, I mean, we're going to have to be perfect to be able to complete this comeback. 21 points, 8 minutes. It's a high order. You're going to need everything to go your way. 50-50 balls. You need, and you need to play shutdown defense. You need the calls and all the balls to go your way. And one of the, thing, the things, if you, like, average it out, 3 points a minute would put you in the lead by 3 points. That's if you completely shut them down. Yeah. So... Not a lot of things working for us, but I think it's definitely possible. Yeah, anything's possible in basketball. I mean, we saw us get score one point versus Loyola in that first quarter of that game. I mean, if you can force the confidence out of Central Catholic and make them think you're coming back, it can change the momentum of the game. Definitely. They need to, uh, they need to definitely shut down Marion Central Catholic, but at the same time, knock down the iffy shots that haven't really been going their way, they'll be right back in it before you know it. The one thing that's going to be hard is that, like we said earlier, there's not much of a stud section here. Definitely. I think, I wonder if that's had an effect on the game. Yeah, and I think, I don't know if it's affected the way they've played, but I can de I can for surely tell you that they play better when, they're, when there is a stud section. Definitely. And they'll call a travel. Nice defense there by Keyshawn. Keyshawn's also a guy that played some pretty good defense. Yeah, I mean, I think, personally, I think there's not one bad defender who can't play good defense on this team. I agree. Jalen gets that swatted. But at least it was a good start to the quarter. Force that travel turnover. Oh, it looks like they called a foul. And that's their seventh, so Jalen will be heading to the line. That's good, big. Stop the clock, get some free throws. And uh, you uh, made the reference hack a shack a couple of uh, games ago. I don't know if this team has a, a shack to hack, but that's also a possibility of an idea. I mean, we saw it. I don't know if anyone was paying attention a couple days ago. Andre Drummond had the most missed free throws in a game. Yeah. I mean, it's. A strategy, I don't, a lot of people don't like it, but I mean, it's definitely a choice. I think the stat was that he was 5 for 16 at halftime. Yeah. So that's 11 free throws that he missed in the first half. Steal by Keyshawn, he'll give it to Xavier. Nice pass to Sean Eck. Sean Eck can't grab it. He'll save it to John, who puts it out on Marion Central. What a play, what a hustle play by those three guys. And what, what awareness that... John Hamilton had to be able to mid-air throw it off of Marion Central before getting called for a travel. Yeah, I was almost scared. I thought we had already turned it over. Yeah. I think we got there. 
as Xavier dribbles, gives it to Keyshawn, fakes the shot. Dribbles right in, and he'll give it to Xavier. Xavier over to Shawnak. Shawnak will take it to Jalen. Jalen with a step back, no good, but what a move. Put him on his, put him on his behind. Put, a, put it in his mixtape. Yeah. The one thing I thought was interesting, they have Xavier out there right now, not Lawrence. Yeah, I think it's because Lawrence is at, what, three or four fouls? Still, I mean, and end of the game, you kind of need your big player. And I think the statement that's trying to be made is Xavier can be that big player. Yeah, we've, we've, been see, we've seen his minutes increase throughout the games. I think we even see him hit some three-pointers versus, what was that? The Loyola, game was Loyola. Yeah, he hit two in a row. And he's... He kind of shoots like Lawrence. They're very similar players. So that's why me and you both were shocked when they were both in. Yeah. I kind of like that lineup. It's interesting. I did though. too. Kind of a fun lineup to see. And a oh, charge wow. taken by Lauren. Or excuse me, Xavier. We were just talking about the two of them. Xavier takes a charge off the ball. That's big right there. I wonder, I wonder if we're going to see at some point Xavier move up full time to varsity because I think there's a limit on how many quarters you can play. Yeah, I think it's six. Six quarters and for two games, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, at some point, I think he's definitely good enough. He's got the talent. Oh, yeah. And now, as we were just saying, Lawrence and uh, Xavier are both in the game right now. Xavier takes a jumper. It's good. Even though the Shamrocks have only scored six points here to start off the, the quarter, they've been a different team, and I like the way they look right now. Yeah, I mean, look, force Central Catholic into a, Marion Central Catholic to a timeout already. Mm -hmm. And it's, the lead is now 17 instead of 21, which we saw. I always believe that it's almost harder to keep a lead than it is to come back from a lead, because you always, I mean, we saw it in the Panther Seahawks, game where the Pan the Seahawks were down by all that. Yeah. I mean, they still lost, but, I mean, you always see, in any game, you always see, you know, it's almost like you see a comeback every game, almost, when you're down by a lot. Yeah, whether or not it's uh, a comeback that becomes fulfilled by the final score being in their favor, you definitely, you definitely see a bit of a comeback in every game. Yeah, you almost see, like, them make one final push every game, and it might not always finish off the way you want, but... I think it's important just for momentum going forward, even if we don't come away with the W, at least to come close and know that we're in the game. Yeah, and a, any type of comeback is always a confidence booster. As a nice little move gets him over half court. I thought that was a travel, the way he spinned around, must have kept his foot down. There's Pitchkey. One thing about hard to come back in high school basketball, there's no shot clock. Yeah. I mean, I think Central Catholic called that timeout to start. I think the coach told him to start milking the clock because we've seen a lot of early shots and a lot of turnovers so far, and that's exactly what you can't do to end the game. And one of the things that I think is important for a coach when you're designing an offense is one of those plays that is designed to milk the clock. And... I bet you Marion Central Catholic is running theirs right now. Yeah, they, I mean, think about it. You can get 40 seconds in one possession. I mean, that doesn't leave enough possessions for St. Patrick to come back. But, I mean, St. Patrick, the problem with that is that you force a lot of turnovers when that happens, and you get a lot of easy points. And that I also agree with you that it, uh, it's definitely at a disadvantage to a high school team trying to make a comeback because there is indeed no shot clock. But a turnover that stopped the clock is always good, which is one that the Shamrocks got. Like Xavier with a spin move. Step back, he shoots, and it's good. Captain Smooth. Wow. Yeah, he's starting to almost take over in this end of the fourth quarter. I think it's two or three baskets in a row. And they trail only by 15 as Jalen gets called for a foul, his third, the team's seventh. So that puts Marion Central Catholic in the, bon in the bonus. Talking about smooth, that crossover. Yeah, that was, that was something like uh, I'd do in intramurals. <laughs> and that's, that's also, um, it's an important thing 
when you think about the fouls now that they're in the bonus is that they can stop the clock and potentially not give up any points. Yeah. But Marion Central Catholic has been making almost every free throw. That was the one thing we were saying, we were saying about the Hackashack. I don't think they've missed it, yeah, one free throw tonight. They just made another set. And those free throws add up. If the Shamrocks made the ones that they shot, they'd be right back in it. Yeah, this could be a lot closer of a game. Floater taken by Xavier. Bad shot. I mean, I know he's on a hot check and he wants his heat check, but I mean, end of the game, you need a good shot. And I believe a foul was called that kind of killed a fast break opportunity. This lineup, if I've ever seen a lineup that's designed to score points, Sean Eck, Jalen Nelson, Keyshawn Thomas, Xavier Pinson, and Lawrence Merritt. Yeah, no big guys. That, that lineup is built to scare an opponent. An opponent. Oh, yeah, look at Sean X is the biggest guy in there right now, and he's, what, 6'3"? I think 6'2 or 6'3", and he plays like he's the smallest. Yeah. We got is a run and gun. Definitely. As they're going to try to get right back in. A nice cut there by Keyshawn. He'll take a jumper off the, off the rim. He'll get his own board, though. Give it to Xavier. Fakes a shot. And Pitchkey takes that right from him. Try to get a little too fancy right there. Pitchkey's definitely showing that he's five tool with the passes he made, that steal. He's come away with a bunch of rebounds, and he's scoring. All right, right there, that was a great pass, great vision. Lawrence guns it right up the court to Keyshawn for three. The bullet smacks one home. 55 to 39, the Shamrocks only trail by 16. Now we're starting to cut that deficit a, a little bit. Just gotta go a little at a time, I guess. And they'll call Keyshawn for a push. But at least you see the hustle and the effort out there for Pats. I mean, they're diving on the floor. I mean, we've knocked the ball out a couple times. And yeah. I thought, man, that one was probably a foul. But the one before I thought was almost a clean steal. I did too. And it's for sure a promising sign as you see a team that's showing a little bit of urgency and a little bit of uh, fight that uh, they could come back. They didn't quite, I don't think they'll quite have enough time to get all the way back in this one. But they can definitely do it. Definitely. I think the other thing is it just shows that this team isn't just going to lay down and give up. They're going to at least try to, to keep it close for themselves. Maybe it doesn't end us with a W, but they know deep down that they gave their best effort at the end. And another pair of free throws knocked down from Marion Central. Keyshawn dribbling around the top of the... Arc over to Dewey. Dewey to Keyshawn who takes a long three. Puts that one short. As there's three and a half now. The one guy that seems kind of to be disappearing throughout this game since the first quarter was Lawrence. I haven't really yeah. seen him hit. He hit the two threes, but. Nice steal there by Keyshawn. The bullet will take it right in and miss the layup. Dewey with a rebound right to Sean Eck. Sean Eck puts it home. Shamrock sure by 16 again. I was going to say that was kind of, the, when Keyshawn missed the layup, I thought that was kind of the definition of our game. You make big plays, but we're just not finishing. And I believe a timeout was called there, probably to talk things over. If you're Coach Bailey, what are you, tell, what are you telling these guys? I think just keep doing what you're doing, forcing turnovers. I mean, they're following a lot, but that's a, it's an inevitability, inevitable. But if we can start making this comeback, push it down to 10, that's a big, big, big goal right now. Yeah. I mean, right now to push it to 10. And I think it also comes down to like showing the other teammates that even though it may, they may be out of it, that you're still fighting. I mean, it'd be interesting to see if Coach Bailey unloads the bench or if he's going to go with the starters and just keep saying, finish this game, finish what you started almost. Yeah, I was just going to ask you if, uh, if you were Coach Bailey, 
what you bring in some of those guys that don't play that much. And there are three minutes and 13 seconds remaining in this ESCC conference battle. Looks like it'll be Lawrence and Dewey out there with Sean, Jalen and Keyshawn. Our 3 0 conference record could be in a jeopardy today, it looks like. Yeah. And Marion Central Catholic's three game losing streak in conference could come to an end. Nice little pick by Keyshawn. Dunk it. <laughs> Layup is good. The Shamrocks cut that deficit. 16 points now. Looks like the stud section's kind of getting into it. There's a solid amount of guys down there. They just need to start making some noise. I'm waiting for someone on St. Pat's to lay down a dunk at some point during this yeah, season. Yeah, I, re I really want to see that. I think if Io was in there and he was wide open, he could definitely do it. Mm -hmm. I know there are a couple of sophomores who can dunk. Sean Eck almost gets away from that pressure. And number three smacks that one in for Marion Central Catholic. Shamrock's starting to show a bit of urgency. Now's the time when you can start jacking up threes. Sean Eck was in the jump ball situation. They call a foul on him as Jalen missed yet another uh, layup. I think what he told you, uh, you said today you were talking to him and he said, we've been executing, just not finishing. That kind of sum, sums up this game. Yeah, I mean, you have it on your mind, but sometimes things just don't happen, go your way. I mean, yeah, it's kind of been, what, two, game, two home games in a row now that we haven't been hitting shots in our own gym. I mean, that's kind of the whole point of home court. You get that familiarity. And you should be able to hit those shots even early on. But for some reason, just er lately, we haven't been hitting shots and execute. We've executed, just we're not hitting those open shots. And one of the things that I think, I believe hockey has the stat scoring chances. I think we'd be right up there with Marion Central Catholic in this one, but the points aren't there. As Sean with a nice, nice drive and nice layup. I mean, the one thing I do like is they're not giving up, even though it's two minutes and we're down 16. I mean, we've had three straight steals. Lawrence with the steal, gives it to Sean, and he'll be going to the line for two, and that stops the clock. Sean, that gave him a little push right there. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like he's starting to get pretty angry. This game has turned really physical in the last couple of moments. Free throw is good for Sean. And I'll do a little bit of advertising for our next game. Today's the 22nd of January. Our next one isn't until the 5th of February, but we'll be here against Carmel Catholic that day. Sean hits another one. Shamrock's trail only by 14. At least we pushed down the lead a little bit. I mean, now it seems kind of insurmountable to come back at this point. I agree. But I kind of like that Coach Bailey hasn't taken out the starters. He's riding with them. I, I like that as well. You start, you finish what you started, I guess. Sean goes right down there and puts another one in there. Sean's coming away with probably a double-digit performance. Yeah, just these last few minutes, he's really come on. So obviously this is a big weekend in the NFL. I got to ask you, what are your predictions for the weekend? Oh, I got Arizona and I got New England. I agree. I think that'll be the Super Bowl, and I think Arizona will win that. I agree. I, I just want my boy Chris Johnson to come back for the Super Bowl. My guy's Larry Fitzgerald, and he put on a heck of a performance against the Packers. I'd love to see it again against Cam Newton. That was an intense game. <laughs> it was. As we have about a minute to go here, as the Shamrocks trail by 14 in the midst of a decent comeback. But yet another free throw is made by Marion Central Catholic. Yeah, I don't think the Hackershack 
would have worked. I, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> I think they've missed zero or one free throw. <laughs> and they've shot a, a lot, I would say. I think, I know this game's had a lot of fouls. <laughs> it has. As a, a minute remains, what a pass to Keyshawn. Keyshawn to Xavier. Ooh. Lawrence takes a deep shot. Lights out Lawrence, no good. That's some Jimmer range. And a foul is called by Lawrence with 51.7 seconds remaining. I think now would be a, an okay time to empty the bench. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. I mean, I think we've, they made the run. I mean, they proved they weren't giving up. Now I think you kind of just say the game's over. Yeah, you know it's a bit out of reach. Why not give some of the other guys a chance? That's the way I would handle this situation. But I guess he'll just ride with the starters. Like we said, maybe he's just going with that thing, trying to teach him a lesson. You finish what you started. Yeah. As the lead is, the deficit is back up to 18. Keyshawn with the floater attempt rolls right in. You almost wonder sometimes, I feel like they're, so, they're so, somewhat passive. They're not willing to drive on regular plays. I mean, we, now we see it because they're just in garbage time, but during the games, you don't see a lot of guys drive like that. And they have some serious driving ability. We've seen Keyshawn, Jalen, Xavier, along with Sean, all getting some open looks. The way the Shamrocks are moving right now, it almost seems like there's six guys out there. Yeah, really. As there's 10 seconds remaining, looks like the Shamrocks will be handed their first conference defeat of the season, and they'll fall to 11-8 and eight as the Marion Central Catholic Hurricanes will improve to, I believe, 13-4, and four, and they'll get their first conference win on their belt. Although they, I would say this was a bit of a blowout, they definitely made it um, interesting towards the end. What's our, what's our next conference game? Uh, Carmel, uh, our next home co conference game is Carmel Catholic on February 5th. Yep. Um, but next Friday we're at Bennett. Oh, that's so that'll be a big game. We'd like to thank you for joining us tonight at Curlin Court. The final score was Marion Central Catholic Hurricanes, 67 and the St. Patrick Shamrocks 51. Thanks to Mr. Machula and Dr. Schmidt for their halftime interview. We'd also like to express our gratitude to some of the behind the scenes people who make this production possible. Joey Osterreich, class of 2019 as a cameraman. Chris Murphy, class of 2018 as a cameraman. John Albuquerque, class of 2018, and Michael Pasquale, class of 2018 as video audio coordinators and Mr. Doyle being our producer and director. Without these people tonight we would not have been able to produce a show. And I'm Nathan Zanis, class of 2017. And I'm Anthony Pasquale, class of 2018. Join us again Friday, February 5th, 2016 when we take on Carmel Catholic right here at Curlin Court. We'll be on Ustream at 6.30 and you can always follow us on Twitter at SPHS Webcast or drop us a line at SPHS Webcast at stpatrick.org. Thank you all for tuning in. For Nathan, I'm Anthony saying hasta la vista from Kerlin Court. Rock on.